Hi everyone, here we are again and um, today we're going to be speaking to a global voice in consciousness parenting. And um, so I came across this lady's work when she was interviewed by Russell Brand in April, just as we were going into, into lockdown, into COVID. And this talk was all, all about how to be a better parent. And um, fantastic interview. I learned an awful lot during that interview. Um, and, um, but what, what, what really fascinated me, this lady, she's a psychologist. She's got a clinical practice in America. She's an author. She's a sought after speaker and she is um, an Indian woman born in India. And uh, so my ears propped up and I thought, well, look at this lady, the road less traveled. Um, so it's a story I relate to myself, having moved from a career in journalism to then setting up my um, company and, um, and also uh, training therapists and practitioners in Ayurveda. And, and walking this path, um, so a similar path, I should say. So, Dr. Shafali, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here. How did you, how did you uh, start this path of, of consciousness parenting? Where, uh, how, what, what led you to this path, I should say? Uh, so when I came to the United States from India at the age of 21, I began a very rigorous meditation practice and began practicing vipassana meditation i was studying psychology uh, and so i integrated the western mindset uh, of psychological theory with eastern spirituality and that became my path and then when i became a mother i began to understand how parenting had been taught in a very traditional hierarchical way very against what I had been learning in psychology and spirituality. So then I integrated all that into parenting and, and came up with this thing that is now called conscious parenting, which really is about the parent understanding that if they don't heal their own wounds from their own childhood, they will repetitively project these wounds, these unmet expectations, these unfulfilled fantasies onto their children and use their children to meet their own inner needs. And then the child doesn't get to blossom and become their own authentic beings. And most of us were raised with unconscious parenting where we were trained to be an instrument to fulfill our parents' fantasies for who they wanted us to be. And very few of us were set free in childhood. We had to discover freedom as we grew up. And, and that's a tragedy. So I, I am very much an advocate of us parents finding our own authentic freedom so that we can then release that for our children to discover for themselves. So when we look at childhood, so, so from a very young age, we are taught to look to others for guidance. And this is the social norm. It's an important part. It's considered an important part of childhood, our parents, our teachers, our community, our society. Um, so how, how do you figure out how, how do you come out of that? You know, what's the path? What are you recommending as this path? If, if you're saying that most people really aren't, um, they're not raised in an environment that is conducive to them being aligned to their authentic self. We are hundred percent not raised in an environment that even understands that this is an, a vital component of life. We're raised in a culture that wants us to follow, be subservient, suppress our authentic voice so that there's order and organization and peace around us. And we have institutions in culture that, that mandate that. You know, we have religious institutions, the parental institution, educational institutions, the marital institution, all of it is geared to kind of clip our wings, to fall into line, follow the norms and to live in fear. And most of us who have broken out of it in our 40s, 50s, we realize what a bunch of lies we were told. This does not take us to happiness. We still don't have happiness, even though we've checked off everything off the prescription list. And then the mavericks of us go, hey, was that prescription list wrong? So you're asking, what is the path? The path is for us parents to understand that Sure, we need to be part of society and we need to be part of the norms, but to what extent? 
You know, we also need to teach our children that we shouldn't believe in culture. We shouldn't follow the norms. You know, you and I were raised very much to believe, to follow, to don't ask questions. We don't want to raise our children like that. And anyway, the current generation is a no culture. It's, it's already rebellious because they're seeing that the way we are trying to raise them hasn't gotten us to a great place. I mean, our world is a mess because of the way we were raised and we were parented. So it is time to turn things around and realize that culture has raised us on fear and scarcity, consumerism and addictions. And look where we are today. We are completely oblivious to our authentic selves. We can't sit still for a second. Our kids are anxious and addicted. Something is amiss. So it comes from this very primitive way that culture has raised us and we need to find a new way. And that's what my work is all about. You mentioned that actually part of your journey was coming to meditation, Vipassana being one of your first earlier experiences and going deeper into yourself in that way. And then, you know, through that journey, you start to unravel all the layers and you start to see things as they are and, and things that may, may before, you know, you consider illusionary and, 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 and start to come out of that. Now, that's a pretty big concept to share with the average person. Um, you know, to for them to even start to un unravel what you're talking about, what you mean by that. Um, it may be even easier um, to even consider that you, you may have some spiritual beliefs that inform your work. So are there any spiritual beliefs that inform your work? Well, my spiritual belief is not to believe in anything <laughs> and just to be as close to reality as possible. What is the isness of this present moment? And the problems in this world come from faulty belief systems. You know, there are no real beliefs that, that can teach us more than our understanding of nature itself. We, beliefs are impositions of the mind and they're constructions of the human. You know, you believe in something, I believe in something, he believes in something. And as you can see, our beliefs are ideological and often create warfare and violence i mean most of the the reasons for religious warfare come from religious ideology which come from religious beliefs belief systems are dangerous especially when they're unexamined and uh, unexplored and we take them for righteousness and for the right path in fact the less we have belief systems the more we open up to our shared humanity and our interconnectedness because we're no longer in our mind trapped in what's right and what's wrong. Instead, we, we move into our hearts where we accept the isness of all parts of our diverse experience. Yeah. So how did you, you know, so when you, you, you travel this path and, and you, you discovered meditation, you discovered Vipassana, you started to peel your layers off, um, you're, in, you're spiritual, not religious. Um, when did you discover your purpose? When did you discover your purpose was to spread this message of consciousness parenting? Yeah. You know, the thing with purpose is that it's always living within us. We are just blocked to it. So when we are in our authentic selves, we are in purpose. So our purpose really is only one thing to be more and more in our own authentic voice. If it's gardening, if it's writing, if it's sitting still, being with children. As long as we're authentic, we're in purpose. So as I began being more authentic and peeling away my layers of the false layers of believing in things that were not true and uh, entering my inner power and my inner abundance, I just naturally had to begin radiating. You know, it wasn't something that I decided, oh, now I wanna be on TV or now I wanna make a video. It just spills out of you. You know, purpose spills out of you when you are being your authentic self. If you love cooking and that's your authentic self, before you know it, you'll be cooking for 10,000 people. It's just going to emerge. Are you going to cook every day? It's just what happens when you are living your true self. So purpose is not something you find. Purpose is something you unfold into. It is in every human being. Each one of us has a purpose. And if I had to put it in a sentence, your purpose is just to tap into your authentic self. When you tap into your authentic self, you move away from things that are not authentic to you anymore. And before you know it, you manifest a life of deep alignment. So because I live and breathe these teachings, I talk these teachings. And then I talk these teachings, I write these teachings. And then before I knew it, it was a book. And then the book gets spread and people hear the authenticity of it and they feel like it's relatable. 
you know, but again, I didn't set out to be on the New York Times. I didn't set out to talk to somebody like you. I set out to be in my authentic self. If I'm true to myself, things happen. If they can happen on a stage or they can happen in my backyard. That's not the point. The point is just to tap into myself. So I'm just tapping into myself and expressing myself. And I'm so excited by what I learned that I have to share. And, and that's how the message begins to spread. And we're going to talk more about that because you have got um, a training academy. You are now really scaling up training practitioners, therapists to, to spread this message. So we're going to come to that. Um, but before that, I wanted to ask you, what, you know, why is it most people don't discover their purpose? What is stopping Be them? Because they're trapped in following the voice of others and what culture says should be on that prescription list wealth and status and belonging and being in a relationship and being a mother or father and, and uh, having five cars and traveling the world. So we believe in these outer layers uh, uh, of, of ourselves as being ourselves. They are only parts of ourselves. They're not the core. Our core really is who we are without that. You know, and that's why I love this particular time of COVID because it's stripping away our outer layers and forcing us to ask, well, who are you beneath these layers? And who we are beneath the layer is who we truly are. And that's where purpose is found. Purpose is not found in a career, in a job, in a... Sure, we can, we can feel purposeful in it, but we can only feel purposeful. For example, we might believe before becoming a mother that if I become my, a mother, I'll be purposeful. I'll find purpose. Many of us know after we become mothers, damn, this is stressful. This is a headache. This is bringing up more crap than good. I've lost my purpose even more now. The point is not to find purpose in anything external. The purpose will be found when you are connected to your authentic self. It is automatic when we are connected. We can be a mother, we can be wealthy, we can have three cars, we can be in a relationship. But if we're not connected to those things, we don't feel it in the moment, it doesn't matter. We will feel purposeless. Purpose comes from being connected to what we're doing and who we are in the present moment. That's it. I want, that's amazing. Thank you. Um, I wanted to touch um, a little bit on, on the role of Indian women. We're both Indian women. We're both um, part of what you would consider the expansion in consciousness. Our, you know, work is um, about uh, raising the voice in this area and also training others. So you know, what role would you say Indian women play in shaping expansion of consciousness? You know, we have we have this whole history, we have these traditions, we have Ayurveda, we have Vedic knowledge. Does that have anything? Well, I think, I think all women, yeah, sure, Indian women. Uh, but Indian women are also, while we have access to these ancient wisdom traditions, we also are mired under a lot of stereotype and archetype that is heavily burdensome. And the Indian culture is extremely, enormously oppressive, repressive, suppressive. So the Indian woman who comes out of that is all the more powerful, right? Like I feel all the more powerful because I came from real suppression. So there's power in that victory. Um, but all women are the vanguards of a new consciousness. We are the bearers and the carriers of connection and nurturance. And we are the mother earth. We, we are, we carry children, we bear children, we milk, the milk comes from us. Um, so we are the epitome of the connectors, but the, the thing that's missing in us is this masculine energy of, uh, believing in ourselves, you know, in terms of having self-governance, self-initiation, we tend to be excessively feminine. And I've learned in my life that my Oculus heel is not having a well-developed masculine energy within me. And as I develop the masculine that's tempered with the feminine heart, I can be the most powerful, you know, so learning to have boundaries, learning to say no, not being afraid of conflict, speaking directly, being assertive, taking space, knowing my voice, not being shy. These are things that we were never taught as Indian women, especially, you know, we were taught the opposite to bow down, to take the crap, to be last. All that has to go, you know, so as women, we owe it to ourselves now to shed this subservience and really step into and own our own sovereignty. So what would you say, the women who are listening to this, listening to this interview, and they will be engaging with every single word that you're saying, 
Um, it will be exciting them. They will feel their energy flow. But they may be, you know, feeling that they, what can they do? You know, how can I step into my purpose? Um, though I feel strongly about all of these things, um, this is how I live my life. This is how it is. What can I do to change it? What kind of, so what kind of advice would you give there? What, what, are, what are five steps that you would take if you were in that position? I don't know about five, but I'll, I'll just talk. I don't know whether I have five steps, but it's not about changing your life. It's not about changing the others in your life. It's not about changing the culture you're in, however crappy. It's about first this, changing your mind, understanding what you're in, even understanding, being aware of the bullshit that has been put on you by this Indian culture or by this the other culture, or by your religious culture. We have been indoctrinated to believe certain things that are false. And just that awareness to even know that it's false is hugely disconcerting, but liberating. I began discovering things were false at 21. It was shocking to me that this is false, that is false, this is not true. Who said this? Who said that? Who said? And I began saying who said all the time. And I realized, who said? Some, somebody in the culture decided something and then people followed and that's what became the norm. And I don't have to follow it. And when I began to realize, okay, even if nothing changes in my outside world, I can still commit to it in a different way from my inside world. That is huge. You don't have to change your life, but you can look at it differently. And just that change in perception is the beginning of freedom. You know, you can at least release the suffering you feel if you, if you don't follow these prescriptions. Now, at least you can tell yourself these prescriptions were lies in the first place. I let everyone around me follow it. I'll even let everyone around me make me feel bad because I'm not following it. But I will know that this is all an illusion. It's a trap. It's a lie. It's coming from their fear. It has nothing to do with me. And you begin to create some pause and some space between others' desires for you and your belief that you have to fulfill them. There's some gap. You know, now you can say to yourself perhaps, yeah, I know my father really wants me to have another kid or my father wants me to get married or my mother wants me to be skinnier. I can see now it's them. It's not me. Just this shift causes freedom. For you, this is, this is really two decades of a transformative journey. And it's led you to this work, to your consciousness parenting, which now you're doing a deep dive and taking it up to another level. So the whole idea is to start to train um, other practitioners of this work. And for, for, for that to also assist in the transformation of lives of others as a result. So tell us about your training program. Who is, firstly, who is it for? So last year, I decided to create an institute to help other moms, especially, or people sitting at home looking for purpose, looking to be of service, to train them to become conscious parenting coaches. So that it's a five-month online program all done online and they go through this immersive program, watch a ton of videos, all my work, and they get trained in my way of teaching. And that at the end of it, they not only become better parents because that's the key and more liberated human beings, but they can take those tools and help other parents feel more connected to themselves and then to their children. You see, the key to conscious parenting is to first heal yourself is to be conscious yourself, to be connected yourself. If you're not, you can't do it with your children. So this coaching program really is for anybody who is interested in taking their own parenting and evolution to a deeper level. I have many non-parents in the program. I have some men in the program. And then to, to take it out into the world and help other parents. But many people don't become coaches. They just have done it for themselves. Many began with doing it for themselves and now it's so contagious within them that they wanna spread it to others. Uh, it's a deep dive into your own evolution. It's really about liberating yourself. Um, I have an, the next cohort starting in September. It's only open twice a year. Applications are open right now. They can go to my website, drshafali.com, and there's a tab called Institute. So yeah, people who are looking for a new path, who want to help parents, want to help children, want to help themselves heal from their own childhood, this five-month program is really an intensive deep dive. It's like a master's level program, but you get it in five months um, to know how to not only work with your own wounds, but to help other people heal from their wounds. And just, just finally, um, Dr. Shifali, what changes are you fighting for 
are there changes that you're fighting for? I'm fighting for people to accept themselves deeply and unequivocally. So if you want to call it a fight, but while I'm fighting for people to accept themselves, I also accept that people may not accept themselves and that's okay. So I don't, I don't fight. I am a huge advocate and a cheerleader and an usher, but I don't have an agenda, you know, um, because I know that people can only awaken when they are ready to awaken. I'm just here to hold the light for them to see that this can exist, this vast potential can exist within them. I've lived it. I'm here saying, hey, freedom is here. Come, freedom is here. Uh, and whoever wants to join me, I'm there, I'm available. I have one more question, just, just really in reaction to what you've just said there. So the journey that you've taken in your own awakening, evolution, you know, whatever words you, uh, you're more comfortable with there, is there anything that you would change in the way that, you've, that it's happened for you, in the way that it's evolved for you? You know, you could, the, I, you know, I could look back and make, see all my mistakes and all my ignorances and, and all the devastating impacts of choices I've made. But part of the spiritual work is to accept that your journey is going to be circuitous and torturous and all the more you will then grow. So you can't say really, you know, yeah, sure. Looking back, I could say, ah, I wish I had not done this. But what's, there's no point. It, that doesn't exist. The only thing that exists is this present moment. Even your last meal or your last interaction doesn't exist in the present. All that exists is here now. And you begin again now. And you use whatever you've learned to, to teach you, okay, I did that because I wasn't evolved. I did that because I was broken. I did that because I lived in fear. How can I make sure I now don't make those same mistakes coming from that same place of lack? They're not mistakes, but you know what I mean? Those erroneous uh, uh, choices made in slumber. How do I make sure I make choices out of my most awakened state? Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Oh, we'll put all the, um, your links and everything for the training course into, uh, into, the, um, into the, this session when we send that out. But that's brilliant. Perfect. Thank you so much. Perfect. So deadline is coming up in two weeks. So if people want to apply for my coaching institute, I would love to welcome your people. Thank you for having me, Sunita. Thank you. Thank you. You take care. Enjoy your day. Bye. Thank you. Bye.